It's not easy to quantify fear, although the Los Angeles Police Department makes a gallant stab at the problem. The department estimates the existence of between four and five hundred street gangs in the city of Los Angeles. Total gang mem membership, somewhere between forty and fifty thousand. When the estimate is extended to encompass all of Los Angeles County, that is the more than three thousand square mile area between Ventura and San Bernardino in Southern California, the LA police estimate rises to between 70 and 90,000 street gang members. In any other country, such assemblies of heavily armed young men and women would merit a stronger description than gangs, armies perhaps. Even by U.S. Army standards, we're talking about four full-strength divisions, fully committed in this case to murder, rape, burglary, aggravated assault, and most particularly the sale and distribution of hard drugs. As Nightline correspondent Forrest Sawyer reports, these are numbers that merit an image of war. Go, 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 go! Hurry, hurry, hurry! The highly publicized raids in 11 states this weekend were more symbolic than they were a real crackdown. A way of showing, say federal officials, that gangs are carrying their epidemic of drugs and murder across the nation. A way of showing, they say, that strong measures are desperately needed. We're in it for the long term. This is, this is a, a major undertaking today, but we're not, we're not stopping here, and, uh, and I hope that message goes out to these groups. Here in South Central Los Angeles is the heart of gang territory. 22,000 known gang members spread across 58 square miles. And it is here, for the past two years, that police and the community have been waging war on gang crime. The marijuana market is closed for now because I'm here. I'm the one that closed the shop. So if you want to keep your life and you want to keep your money and you want to keep your car, I suggest maybe you ought to leave the neighborhood. The L.A. police have spent millions of dollars in the campaign, putting more officers on the street. What if I said robbery? Who? Robbery. Would that make your day? Putting their specialized crash unit, community resources against street hoodlums, to work on a new system of developing intelligence creating a new computer program. Now, when an officer needs to track a suspect... Instead of taking three hours to hand search a person, we can identify a person in a minute. 30 seconds. The community has joined the campaign, intimidating people they suspect of selling drugs. You got any drugs on you now? No, I don't. Sure? We had a blue bandanas. You had blue bandanas up here. That's not acceptable to be sold in this community. Threatening boycotts of stores that sell the gang colors of blue or red. <laughs> Volunteers are working to clean up gang graffiti. Yeah! 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 And they're offering alternatives to kids who are trying to stay straight. Yeah! 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 Anyone who comes to Gary Honore's karate class has to pay a price. Stay out of the gangs and improve your grades. Two years after the campaign began, statistics on gang-motivated crime show a dramatic drop, down 23 percent in South Central LA. It all sounds like a real success story, one that has gotten tremendous media attention. But when you are in South Central LA, away from the glare of publicity, you find a very different picture. It's like hell in Los Angeles. This is the worst place in the world to live. Everybody wants to come in and live, and this is a really bad place. What it's, makes it so bad? The drugs and the gangs. Wasn't for the drugs and the gangs, it'd be all right. But that's that's the problem. Many residents say they feel no safer. Gang membership is up 40 percent this year in Los Angeles, and South Central LA still averages one drive-by shooting every day. See, that's the part that bothers me. When is it ever going to stop? Where do it end at? And once they kill all these other then who's left? <laughs> okay, good job. Neighborhood kids say they worry about being killed all the time. Especially around here in this area, you know, we don't want to walk the streets. See, every time we watch the street, you see me looking back, I'm, you know, wondering, I have to watch who's coming or whatever. They are dead. They are dead. Everybody I grew up with is dead. Curtis Tutt has been shot and stabbed so many times, his friends say he has nine lives. Pookie, take it down, take it down! Yeah! He and his friend Pookie Felix say they want to stay out of gangs, but the only safety they can find is in guns. I got a, uh, got me a, a sawed off 14, sawed off 12, got a uh, 357, 
and a uh, four five. And we don't have guns for drive by. We have guns for Take somebody five. ignorant who want to try something, and we just have to, you know, let loose on them. Mainly, we hate, you know, doing it to our people, but they ask for it, so it's got to be done. How do you feel when you hear that a crip got shot? The girls, too, are drawn into the ever-widening circle of violence. CKC, because originated from her brother. Her brother got killed. So um, she took on the name. and took on where he left off at. This is little CKC. It's my homegirl. Police officers on the front line say they, too, feel frustrated. When they're told the crime rate is dropping, they point to the children they arrest, who are back on the streets the next day, armed and making hundreds of dollars every night selling drugs. This is Forrest Sawyer for Nightline in Los Angeles. When we come back, we'll be joined by a member of a Los Angeles gang, Curtis Tutt, by Stephen Valdivia, who heads a private agency that runs programs aimed at keeping youngsters out of gangs, and by Stephen Higgins, member of the federal government's Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. In fact, he heads it up, which is trying to crack down on gang violence. This is... Curtis Tutt, whom you just saw in Forrest Sawyer's report, is a member of the Sixth Use Brims, which is part of the larger Los Angeles-based gang, the Bloods. He is 24 years old and has been involved with gangs since he was 12. Stephen Valdivia is Executive Director of Community Youth Gang Services, a social service agency in Los Angeles that conducts programs designed to keep school children out of gangs and to help parents cope with gangs. Stephen Higgins is director of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the government agency that conducted an anti-gang sweep in 11 states this past weekend. I'd like to spend a few minutes, first of all, with Curtis Tutt, just to give our audience a little bit of background on gangs. You joined when you were 12. Do you remember how and why? Uh, when I first joined, it was because of um, the junior high school I went to. I had guns put on me numerous of times, had my money took in, and my meal tickets, and... I found sanctuary with the gangs in my neighborhood because the school I went to was out of my neighborhood. And then from there on, it just got more deeply involved with the murders and um, robberies and forth on. You, yeah. told, you told a member of our staff earlier on that you can't be a member of a gang and not be a murderer. Would you, would you explain that? Uh, that's what um, gang banging is all about. It's um, about going back to another neighborhood, um, shooting or just um, making it known that your neighborhood do exist and uh, if I can't get a gun it's people in the neighborhood that has one so like if my gun was taken from the police I always can get one from someone else somewhere else within my neighborhood and uh, carry on with what I was planning to do in the first place or someone else to do it for me uh, you've, you've, you've sort of answered the question for me already, but let me ask it straight out and get a straightforward answer from you. You've killed other people then? Uh, I never stuck around to see, but I have uh, let go of the chamber on someone. You've done what? I have uh, fired off a gun at uh, numerous of people's. I haven't stuck around to see if they died or not, but most likely I have. Of the people who joined the gang that you first joined when you were 12 years old, how many are still around? Uh, the, all the friends that I grew up with as a, as a kid, like um, coming up before I get in elementary, playing like with um, with the G.I. Joe dolls and Legos and Hot Wheel cars, friends I really grew up with that was from my neighborhood, all of them is dead right now. All the friends I'm hanging around with now just moved in the neighborhood or, re or I met them recently. All my friends is dead. Many gang members make it to 30? Uh... If they um, locked up in jail for the rest of their life, they probably could. Now, if you want to stay out on the street, and I assume you do, and if you want to stay alive, and I assume you do, how do you do that and still remain a part of the gang? Uh, well, that's all about staying alive in uh, streets of L.A. The um, people that's um, not in gang, just like they're civilians in a war zone. So they're more terrified, just as I am, walking... In down the street when I know I'm out in my neighborhood. I'm about as scared as just the people that's not into gangs. Because you only, your only sanctuary is your neighborhood. And you have to um, keep your neighborhood together. You can't let nobody come in and take your um, territory. Any way that you could quit the gang? I mean, is it, is it sort of like the mafia? Once you're in, you're in for life? 
As long as you're still living there, you're going to always be a part of that neighborhood. People are going to always come and get you. There's no way that um, you can get out when you're still staying in the same area that you was at and you did your little dirt. So nope. the only way you can get out is to um, move to a different um, city or just move out the community altogether. Why don't you? Uh, it's like why people are still living there. They don't want to be um, hassled with the gangs. They have not. They don't have the money or the funds to uh, move out. Well, I mean, I, I assume over all these years that you've that you've made a little bit of money over the years. Have you? What do you spend it as fast as you get it, or you've never been able to save it, or what happens? Uh, well, you never think about tomorrow. You're just today. That's the way you grow up thinking in the neighborhood because you lose your values of uh, what life is really all about. So you just get your money right there and you have a lot of money. You spend it on girls, buy jewelry, fast cars, more drugs, you keep spending money when you have to. Then you get raided, busted by the police or something, and then that's took and you have to start all over again. And um, then you're having so much fun in the neighborhood, it's like a game, you know, it's like so much excitement, it's like going to like Magic Mountain and getting on Colossus or something, it's just fun and it's hard to get out. Once you get caught up in it, you lose yourself off in it, off in the game. In our next segment, we'll be talking to Mr. Valdivia and Mr. Higgins, but I just want to ask you one more question. You know that over the past weekend there were raids in 11 states, and I know there were raids in the Los Angeles area. Um, what kind of an impact do raids like that have on those of you who are looking at it from the ground up? In other words, you're on the street. You see these raids happen. I assume some of your buddies got busted. What kind of an impact does that have on you? Okay, like you said, some of my buddies got busted. Uh, one of the raids happened right on my block. Um, while they was raiding one spot in my neighborhood, the other spot was still going on strong. While they had people go down there and make sure that um, the um, alcohol and uh, tobacco and firearm enforcement was there on that one particular spot taking care of their business, um, the neighborhood kept on taking care of their business elsewhere. You mean they were selling drugs right down the street? It's right down the street. All right, let's take a break. We'll continue our conversation with our other guests in just a moment. Let me just quickly reacquaint you with our other two guests, Stephen Valdivia, Executive Director of Community Youth Gang Services, a social service agency in Los Angeles that conducts programs designed to keep school children out of gangs and to help parents cope with gangs. And Stephen Higgins, Director of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, the government agency that conducted an anti-gang sweep in 11 states this past weekend. Mr. Higgins, in a, in a curious way, after listening to Curtis Tutt, uh, what you guys do, in a sense, is almost provide life insurance to these folks that you round up. You extend their life far beyond anything they expect when they're on the street. That can't be terribly frightening to them. Well, I, I'm not sure. First of all, I'd like to get the name of that crack house right down the streets uh, from Curtis so we could drop in and, and help make their business a little bit worse. But I... You know, I don't, I'm not that pessimistic about what we're doing. I think for, for the people who live in those neighborhoods, at least some of the ones I've talked to, at least we offer uh, some hope to them and, and hopefully by alerting people throughout the country as to what's happening with the Crips and the Bloods uh, coming out into those areas, we're alerting them to, to what can happen. But we're really just dealing with the violence connected with this. Uh, we're not into what makes the gangs run or anything of that kind. How do you how do you stop the, the the sort of gang warfare without getting into that? In other words, all it becomes, in a sense, if you come in with with your own uh, heavy artillery, is sort of a three-way war, then, isn't it? Yes, it is. Unfortunately, uh, I don't think no one in ATF or outside of ATF thinks that we'll be able to stop the gang warfare. But I do think that we will have a good chance of getting these people. And, and about half the people we arrested this last weekend were convicted felons, either that or they were people, they were wanted fugitives. So if we get those people and get them out of the community, I think we're having an impact no, no matter how small, and I think that's a, that's a plus. Mr. Valdivia, how much of an impact do you estimate that these raids have? Well, without putting a value on the raids, uh, I do know that the law enforcement response is absolutely necessary. However, uh, local law enforcement in Los Angeles uh, has already come to the conclusion that uh, this, to wage only this kind of battle is, is much too expensive and uh, in, in both in terms of cost and man manpower, also in terms of uh, the human condition. Uh, what we've done in Los Angeles is law enforcement and the community have both uh, gotten their resources together and have attacked the problem uh, from a more uh, comprehensive uh, viewpoint. Uh, by that, uh, we are taking, the community is taking back control of its, of its, of its youth, of its neighborhoods, and uh, in the areas that we've been able to do that effectively, 
uh, with cooperation of local law enforcement, you have seen a decline even while the, the gang numbers continue to spiral all over Los Angeles and the United States. You have heard stories like Curtis Tut's a hundred times before. Is, is a young man like this of 24 really beyond your reach? In other words, is, uh, there, is, is there any point in even, in even beginning with a 24-year-old anymore? I think the simplest way for folks to understand this problem is to look at it like a disease. Uh, he may be infected and he may be incurable, uh, although he may be able to be the few that are cured. What we do is we, we hit it, we, we'll, we will not give up on people like Curtis, but at the same time, if, and I think if you ask Curtis, he'll agree that he does not want his kids or his younger brother or sister to, to follow the same route that he has. What he has seen is that uh, in an absence, in a vacuum, that is what he has had to choose from. Either it was a gang or suffer. What we're trying to do in those communities is change the environment so that people don't have that choice or they have a greater choice than that than to just join the gang. Curtis, uh, I, I, I thought I saw you nodding there, but I want to make sure you have a chance to, uh, to answer directly. Do you have any younger brothers? Uh, I have an older brother. And a, uh, well, my main concern is my youngest um, sister. Well, what about your want, younger sister? You, I, I, I assume you don't want her in a gang. I would hate her to have to go through um, what I'm going through right now because, like I said, I want to get out. But when you got people out there coming up looking for you and coming through the neighborhood, and you got so many different cars, and the drive-by shooting is so fre frequently and unpronounced that um, it just scares you. You have a little sister that I probably won't even get a chance to um, see her graduate from high school, and it's sad. What, what do you offer, Mr. Valdivia, to young people like this? How do you give them a chance to get out? Well, it's difficult. You know, one of the things that's happening today is that uh, the L.A. school district is looking for a way to cut $100 million out of their budget. Uh, we continue to, to explain that the, the gang problem is not primarily a law enforcement problem. It is a social disease. It is a social and economic problem. Uh, people will not line up to starve. They are going to uh, survive whether it's on, on other people's goods or it's on drugs. Uh, but before that, uh, you have to provide a decent education as a, as a means to succeed. The areas that we're talking about have the lowest educational scores in, this, in the state of California, and uh, with the budget crunch that's just, that is coming, it's hard for me to, to validate expensive uh, federal operations in, in the face of, of these kinds of local uh, starvation kinds of uh, problems that we've got to deal with. Mr. Higgins, and yeah. I, I know you're eager to get back in and respond, and I'll give you a chance to do that in just a moment. We'll continue our conversation in just a moment. And we're back with Stephen Higgins. Mr. Higgins, Mr. Valdivia was making an eloquent plea a moment ago for more money to go into education, social problems, and by implication, less of that money being spent on federal sweeps. Yes, I, I, we're single-minded about, I think, wanting to put uh, these people who are, who are carrying guns and, and selling crack at the same time behind bars for a good long time and getting them out of the community. But we're not single-minded in thinking that's the answer to, to the problem of these people in, in belonging to the gangs. I think at the federal level, Director Bennett is doing almost exactly the same thing in coordinating both a law enforcement and a, and a response that touches on the demand side through prevention, education, and, and a lot of other things. And, and trying to change attitudes is basically what we're all trying to do. So I don't disagree with, with what Steve says. Let us end where we began. I mean, you picked up how many people? A couple of hundred people this past weekend? Uh, and in Southern California alone, as I was saying at the beginning, I don't know if, if these are your figures, but these are certainly the figures of the LAPD. We're talking about between 70 and 90,000 gang members. Hardly a dent. Well, I don't think you have to pick up every speeder and every jaywalker to, to get your point across that there are laws against speeding and jaywalking. So I don't think we have to arrest every gang member to get our point across that if you use a gun and you're dealing crack, we're going to try and put you behind bars for a good long time. Curtis Curtis Tutt, how much of an impact do you think that's going to make on, on you and your, your fellow members of the blood? Well, if you have kids, I think anything is uh, better than nothing, but it's really not making a damage. I, I don't see nothing in the neighborhood changing at all. Nothing? Nothing. I mean, no one, gets, no one gets in the least bit concerned that the next sweep might pick them up? You're not worried that the next one's going to pick you up? Uh, with some of the people, that's the only means of money. So um, you take that chance, and they really don't even spend that much time in jail. They'll be out the next day, and it's, it's always... A cost. Ted, it's the cost of doing business that uh, it's, it's economic survival that we're looking at. 
and and every there has to be all of these parts making a making a, a difference on this but the community has to be part of it uh, education prevention job development all of the usual kinds of social service things that you've seen be reduced in the, in the past few years gentlemen yeah, i like to um quickly, like to say would. something go ahead quickly. um yeah with um with the gangs united that's make them strong but then the community is divided you got some people that's too scared to speak up and when it's like that then um you have the police have no help if the community won't help themselves then um no one can help them curtis you make an excellent point thank you very much mr valdivia mr higgins thank you both